Number 22B is on sample space. Your stat box if you have it already. Everyone got the title? So the sample space, also denoted with the capital letter U, usually it's like a little bit italic. So the sample space U is the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. So we talked about the outcomes yesterday. Well, the sample space is all of the outcomes. Every different thing that could happen is considered the sample space. It's also referred to as the universal set U. So you might hear the word outcomes, all the possible outcomes, sample space, universal set. Those three things mean the same thing. represent or illustrate the sample spaces to help us figure it, them all out. The one you're probably most familiar with is making a list. So we can make some lists. We'll do that today. We can also use tables, which we'll talk about more in depth on Tuesday. We can use two-dimensional grids. And the first time I saw one of these, I was helping a math study student, and I was like, what is this? Like, I just didn't get it. But they're really not that bad, and uh, as we've been moving through as we move through this chapter, I think you'll see that the 2D grids are actually pretty helpful. Venn diagrams are something, do you guys know what a Venn diagram is? Or just two circles? We'll talk more in depth about those later in this chapter as well. I can't remember which section, but it'll either be late next week or early the week after. And then tree diagrams, which I feel like once you see the tree diagrams, you're going to be like, oh yeah, I, I've seen that before. These are not my favorite because they always get messy when I make them, but we're going to practice the list the 2D grids and the tree diagrams, just to kind of get some experience with all of those. We also have a section later on that we'll go more in depth on the tree diagrams. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at an example and actually find the sample space in three different ways. So we're going to find the sample space using a list using a 2D grid, and using a tree diagram, just so we can kind of compare the same situation, but in three different ways. I know a lot of times we talk about probability, it's like, let's flip a coin, let's roll a die, let's spin a spinner. I always think about food and candy. So for our, our uh, example here, what are the possible outcomes when drawing two starbursts out of a bag containing cherry, strawberry, lemon, and orange starbursts? So your traditional path. We're going to take a look at, you know, how many different ways can we take two starbursts out. We're not going to be calculating the probability in this example, so I don't need to know the frequency. I don't need to know the total number of starbursts in the bag or anything. It's just what are the different things that could happen. Now, to try to, I'm, this could get a little confusing. I'm trying to not make it so confusing. The order is going to matter in this example, okay? So it's going to be two different things if I pull out a cherry and a strawberry or a strawberry and a cherry, okay? We're gonna, just going to say we're going to eat them in that order, so that changes it. One thing I was going to mention I forgot is that a lot of times when we make our lists and things, we don't write down the full word, so we're going to write down C for cherry, S for strawberry, L for lemon, and O for orange. Alright? Does that make sense? <laughs> so we already talked about the order. 
So listing the outcomes, I do try to do this in a systematic way so that I'm not So that I kind of don't get confused. So if I start with cherry, I could get a cherry and I could get another cherry. I could get a cherry and a strawberry. I could get a cherry and a lemon. I could get a cherry and an orange. So again, in this example, the order does matter. So I could get a strawberry and a cherry, and I understand we already had that combination, but we're going to say the order matters. So I get a strawberry and a strawberry, a strawberry and a lemon, and a strawberry and an orange. So then, stand in the middle so I'm not blocking it. I get a lemon and a cherry, a lemon and a strawberry, two lemons, or a lemon and an orange. And then all my different combinations, or all my different types that I could get with orange. So that's like listing our outcome. Have you guys done that before? List them all out. How many total do we have? 16. So let me know how many total different things could happen. So that's listing. Questions about how to write a list? Besides the mildly confusing part about order matters in this example. And you, when you get to your assignment, I think it's more clear that the order matters. Like, I don't think you'll question it, but I know we were kind of questioning it earlier today. Okay, so here's how you do a two-dimensional grid. So notice I'm not, I don't have like a how-to list, so if you need to write yourself a how-to list while we do this, you can. But basically you have like, almost like two axes, like the positive part. And you put all of your options along one side and then all of your options along the other side. So my options for the first pick are, wait, I'm going to check out one thing real quick. This order is a little confusing. Okay, so I'm going to start. Okay, so we could pick a cherry, a strawberry, a lemon, or an orange, right? Those are the four things that could happen on the first pick. And then on um, my second pick, I could have a cherry, a strawberry, a lemon, and an orange. So to make our two-dimensional grid then, we actually put a dot at like almost every intersection that this could happen. So a cherry and a cherry would be right here. Strawberry and a cherry, lemon and a cherry, orange and a cherry. Cherry and a strawberry, cherry and a lemon, cherry and an orange. So I put a dot at like every intersection. It represents each different thing that could happen. So if I keep filling these in, and they don't always look like a square because you might have your like flipping a coin and you're rolling a die. You know, that's six options for the die and two options for the coin. So it's not always like a perfect square. But again, each of these represents what could happen. So like right here, this is I pick a lemon and then I pick a strawberry. Does that make sense? Yeah. And we'll talk more about these grids on Monday. We'll actually use the grid for probability. So what you can kind of use that to determine what kind of, like what your frequency is, you can use the grid. That's when we do our, our theoretical probability. Okay, last but not least are the tree diagrams. So the tree diagrams, we'll have our first pick and our second pick. And like I said, they're not my favorite because I get pretty messy when I do them. But if my first pick is a cherry, then I could have another cherry, I could have a strawberry, I could have a lemon, or I could have an orange. So I kind of make a tree structure. I've got these branches. And so each branch represents a different thing that could happen. So again, two cherries, cherry, strawberry. Then I gotta do it, if I first pick strawberry, then there's another four things that could happen. And I don't have space to keep going, so I'm just gonna start more over here. So 
if I start with a lemon, then I've got four different things that could happen. So again, each branch represents an option of what could happen. And we can see here, we do still have 16 options. I forgot to have us count for the, or the two dimensional grid. But it was four by four, so there were 16 options. Here we've got 16 different branches. We've got 16 options as well. There's one last thing I want to kind of just talk about with the tree diagram. Other questions? Now let's just say, I know it's not actually part of the example, but let's say there was a third pick. Then I'd have to go branch off all of these. So I'd have, again, cherry, strawberry, lemon, orange. And this is where, like I said, for me, this is just too messy for my taste. As you can see what's happening as I extend this. And so each different branch represents an option. So I could have orange, cherry, lemon, or orange, cherry, strawberry, or orange, strawberry, cherry. So each different branch as you follow it out is like another outcome. So I know that doesn't fit our example, but I just wanted to illustrate that a little bit further. Any questions? So on your assignment, you're going to get to practice all three ways. So you'll have some practice with all of them. Maybe you'll decide what you like best. But what's what's the point? Why do we need to know all the possible outcomes anyway? Ooh, that is a good question. So what we'll do when we talk about theoretical probably, probability on Monday, we need to know all the possible outcomes. That's kind of like the total number of trials and that that's everything that could happen. And then we want to figure out what are the chances of certain things happening. So we need to know all those outcomes for probability. There's only three parts. So it's not super long. I'm for sure you could finish it. I also do still have all of the um, all of the materials. If you are finishing up your investigation. Also, remember when we were talking about impossible events yesterday? So I looked at my weather app and it said a 0% chance of rain. I walked out of my house and the coat was out of its hood and it was raining. So I don't know. Who knew there was gonna zero percent change of rain? I went back in and got a pretty coat, I think it's fine. But that weatherman messing with us.